you, Rachel. This is amazing. You know, this is a sold-out room. Um, so you all are privileged to be here this morning, and we are so excited to have you. This um, structured is for 30 people, so 35 people registered. And blowing out our registration just makes us all so happy. And thank you all for being here. Um, I have the privilege of introducing Karen, and I have a script, and I'm going off script, Maria, you know. <laughs> And, and the reason why I have to go off script is because I know Karen, and she's amazing, and her vision is amazing. Did I pay you? Yeah, you know, right now. <laughs> um, she pays with wonderful service. She is the founding uh, member of her brokerage, and she is the broker, the principal broker. And today you're going to hear great stuff about Karen, but the real thing you need to do is go visit her at home. She has a beautiful studio and is always very welcoming. They always have lovely drinks and coffee and treats. I mean, it's, and the hospitality is fabulous. So she is the person who's gonna help you find the best home. And thank you so much, Karen, my friend, for coming today and sharing your wisdom with us. Of course, thank you. I always appreciate advocates like her, of course. <laughs> I pay her in chocolates. Um, <laughs> But good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Hall. I'm the principal broker and co-founder of At Home Real Estate. We are a residential real estate brokerage, but we chose to go completely off the beaten path of what you expect out of a real estate company. We're just a veteran, family-owned little boutique. Uh, so that gives us the ability, one of my favorite quotes is that we get to build a brand from scratch. Uh, you know, that's a good thing, but it's also a challenge because you have to build everything from scratch. But we see it as a creative opportunity. And it's funny because I, I love getting to hear where you all are coming from. And there's a lot of creative brains in the room. Um, but it's such a big variety. And it's funny because opportunities like this, you get a few minutes to talk and use words and speak about what you're trying to convey. And it's hard, right? You get maybe two minutes, if you're lucky, to try to explain to people. Well, what is a brand? A brand is really something that people can look at instead and instantaneously get the feeling about who you are, what you're about, what you're trying to convey. And that's kind of a challenge, but because then you're using colors and fonts and things like that to try to create it. And unfortunately, today I only have 20 minutes and I could talk for hours about building a brand. So I brought notepads in case you need to take notes. I'm going to try to just hit some of my top tips. Um, and then we may just have to do a longer one sometime soon because. It's a big topic. I was privileged to speak at the women's forum that the Chambers group had a few months back. And this was a very popular topic that came out of that group was, you know, people, but it's such a broad. You want to know about how do you create a brand? How do you package that? How do you let people know about it then? Get the message out of who you're about. Um, how do you hire to your brand and maintain that, which is, is very hard. So like I said, it's such a huge topic. I'm just going to do my best to get little bits today. Um, and again, it's such a variety, I can't even tailor. I love this. Um, so a little bit about us. Not, I don't want to talk too much about me because we don't have a lot. But we had to do it and do it quickly and figure out who we were about because we are a real estate lounge and design center. Nobody has a clue what that is because we made it up. <laughs> so, But very quickly, we just had our grand opening in September 2012. Uh, 2013, we were blessed. We got to be the Rising Star Business Award winners for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, 2014, we actually got Best of Alexandria, Reader's Choice, for Best New Business and Best Realtors, um, the top two. So that's kind of how I ended up here today, hopefully with a little bit of credibility. Um, so I'll kind of start hitting you guys with a little bit. One of my favorite uh, quotes that we were watching actually a webinar that the Virgin Advertising Execs were doing this week, one of my favorite quotes was, authenticity and why you are excited about what you're doing is the start of your brand. And that kind of zings right to the heart of it. Um, what does a brand represent? You can also rebrand if you're not a startup. We got to build it from scratch. But even if you're a current brand, and what does it represent? It may not be. A, it could be a big company. It could be a hotel. Um, Weston Hotels even has a signature smell that people don't even realize. They actually sell scent machines. <laughs> I know because we have them. <laughs> um, so it could be that. It could be you're doing an event. Maybe you're having a marathon or an event. That needs branding. It could be you're a work group within your own organization or firm. Maybe that needs a brand. It could be you're an individual business. Um, 
oh, again, there's so many ranges. Everything needs a brand. It's just to convey instantaneously, hopefully, a feeling is what we're all about. We're trying to provide a new experience and simultaneously give a hint at what you're doing. And it, when you're starting, you, you just look at our at-home logo. You have no clue what that is. But it's my job to then say, OK, I founded this with red on purpose. It's actually a certain color red. I know exactly the codes for it because we wanted something that convey kind of a regal treatment, a little bit of royalty and warmth at the same time. That's why it can't be too orange of a red and it can't be too pink of a red. Um, the font, we standardize even the fonts that we're using because we wanted something a little bit modern. Um, it allows us to do taglines left and right of you know, people out here in the lobby. She's like, oh, make yourself at home, or I'm wearing red slippers. So somebody says, oh, there's no place like home, or all the time people come through our lounge and they'll say, I just feel like I'm at home. And then it takes them a minute and they go, oh, like I get it. Um, so you try to, you know, I, I would kind of, hopefully it'll resound a little bit with the graphic artists because a lot of times people just think, I'm gonna go somebody and get them to design, design me a cool logo. I like horses, let me just design a logo. Well, you kind of got to do the homework on the back end of figure out who you're about. What are you trying to convey to people? Are you casual? Are you modern? Are you trendy? Are you, you want to be classic like old town scrolls and fonts and things like that. The graphic design people need to know what you're about and what you're trying to convey even in colors other than just, I like purple because it's my favorite color. Um, and then you can go to places, I mean, we have professionals around town that do graphic design, but we also have places online like Fiverr, um, some other websites. You can go on and everything is $5. You go on there and as long as you know what you're trying to convey of who you want to be, you can go on Fiverr, hire people to do all kinds of things for $5. So that's just a little extra tip. So I'll try to go through some of these things. Um, again, just food for thought when you're trying to brand yourself. What are you about? Uh, what is your point of differentiation or your POD? That's the biggest thing is what's going to set you apart. If you're selling insurance, why, why is somebody going to work with you over 50 other people, including online people that also sell insurance? What makes you different? Um, and try to convey that. Don't be afraid of filling a niche that people need. As an individual, I needed a brand as a real estate agent. So I had to set myself apart against thousands, literally she knows, in, in Northern Virginia or the DC metro area, there's thousands of realtors. Why is somebody gonna work with me instead? When I was just an agent, I specialized in military relocations. So military has always been my niche. At this point, I've been in military times, I'm on, you know, interviewed on the radio, NPR, all that, because people know nationally that I specialize in helping people with military. So don't be afraid of filling a niche. So many people are, they don't want to miss out on one opportunity, so they try to brand themselves as, I can help everybody. And you kind of become the jack of all trades, master of none that way. So by building, like branding yourself as especially a specialty in one area, the people that you do serve know that you're amazing at what you do, and they're going to tell other people that want to work with you that have that same need. So don't be afraid of that. I see that a lot. Again, what do you want to be known for? Maybe you need to go back to or start with a core values or a mission statement. Um, and again, it could even be for an event. Say you're going to organize an event and it doesn't have to be a huge company, but you may still have a mission statement for what you want to accomplish in that. And that will give you a heart of things. We wrote our core values and those of you who have been to our lounge and design center, we wrote them and we wrote them and they're up on the wall in stainless letters, literally stuck on the wall. So we, we wrote those as it would apply to both our real estate agents as well as consumers. And we love, we give tours all the time, like what real estate office does that? And people all the time love this core values wall. Know your competition, but I'm wanting you to know your competition not to copy them or do what they're doing. I just want it to help reinforce who you are and what you stand for. That's part of the beauty is we look at other industries. We don't look at what other, we wanted, we went through Small Business Development Council and had to do business planning. The best organization over there, experts for free for any business owner. And we went through this whole business plan and we had to do an exercise of know who your competition is. What are other real estate companies in the area? Where are they selling? But we don't pay attention to what they wanted or what they were gonna do. We said, what do consumers need? We need to know our audience. What do real estate agents need? And it, to us, it was more of a, people flock to things like Apple Store in the middle of the day when they should be at work. So Apple Store, Nordstrom customer experience, and HGTV. And we just said, what do people need and how do we provide it? And how do we throw some technology at it? 
So we, again, just did what people needed, and maybe that's our point of differentiation. But we will see. But that's the only reason I want you to know your competition. I don't want you to copy them. I want you to know what people are doing in your own industry, but what are people doing in other industries? We look a lot, even though we're a real estate company, and we help people buy and sell homes, we look at the travel industry. What is companies like Silver Car doing to disrupt their own industry? Luxury hotels, what are they doing? Um, anybody in the hospitality industry, luxury car companies, what are they doing to message to people? And it's a lot of those, they're running out and they've got a bajillion dollars, so let them do the research and you kind of benefit from some trends that they're doing. Above all else, um, which is one of the hardest things, is stay true and consistent to your brand. Um, it's very hard, especially if you're in a sale. If somebody comes at you and you're like, wow, they can make me a lot of money this year. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They're a jerk. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, we, we've kind of sent some ripples through our industry because we're willing to fire agents. If they're, we always tell people if, if somebody drives up and you're like, oh, crap, that person's here, it's dragging everybody down. And I know hiring was a big topic that came out of that women's forum. And again, we could talk a lot about that alone. How do you hire for your culture? And how do you stick to your guns? And you could dig deep into that because it's what do you have the power to control and not to control within your organization. Um, but just try your best to always hire off a culture or personality or whatever you're about and someone that's going to champion your brand. That's who you want working for you. I always say I can teach a real estate agent to build a business and be successful based off of what their likes and dislikes are and pushing them a little bit outside their comfort zone, but I can't teach them to just be well-intending individuals and to uphold my core values. And that's very, very hard to keep yourself to. Um, try to find somebody that will keep you accountable and, and kind of keep you in the background and say, I don't know about this person. Um, and don't, you know, don't feel bad if it's not a good fit because one person that's not a good fit is going to drag down the rest of your team. Even if you're a team of one, it's going to really drag you down then. <laughs> You don't want to deal with that. Um, one, a couple of brands, um, Zappos I actually love is one brand that they focus a lot of their company on tone and voice. And now we're kind of touching a little bit on the packaging, like I said, with the logo, the colors. Um, logos, colors, taglines. Um, one of my pet peeves that may make enemies is when you're thinking of a name for your company or a program is I don't like people that use a word to describe themselves. If my, because the buzz I hear is if you happen to call yourself something, then it's probably because you're not conveying your message very well, or maybe you're lacking in that area and you feel like you've got to tell people you have integrity. That's just an example. Like I said, might ruffle some feathers. Um, but that's always been kind of one of my pet peeves. If you look at brands like McDonald's, Nike, Starbucks, it's one word. doesn't tell you they do coffee. doesn't tell you they sell hamburgers. Um, doesn't tell you they, and that's because of branding. They use colors or golden arches or whatever. That has nothing to do with hamburgers whatsoever. But it's, again, examples of branding or tying back to a feeling. You know, Nike doesn't say shoes, but they tried to tap into what they wanted to convey about their running shoes of, you know, Nike and the, the speed and things like that. But it's just trying to convey instantly a feeling. Attention to detail. One of our favorite quotes is, smallest details matter most. Um, I'll give out a props to uh, American bankruptcy. And it's a lot is, is the... Um, Again, your environment and the experience that you give people. I came here for a tour. As soon as I walked off the elevator, I was heading left, and she immediately waved me right over to the desk. She's like, oh, come on over, Mrs. Hall. I look over, and on the screen out here, they have a screenshot of my website for at-home real estate already on the computer. She goes and gets him. He comes right out. And then I get a grand tour. They have an amazing facility here. You should absolutely get a tour in your off time. They have an AV, a whole video I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but they have a whole video audio um, studio that's completely full service. They had all my logos on there and everything, and it was just, it made me feel welcome. But it's those little tiny details. You know, he made the comment of, oh, if, if anybody's coming, I, I want to be sure and customize that experience. But it's just those little details matter most. It could be a font we're talking about. It could be a color. It could be the way you dot your I's or cross your T's. Um, but even in a script or a font, you keep it consistent in everything that you do. And, I mean, even the notepads, hopefully, you know, you'll see it's the same fonts, the same colors, things like that. I rolled up with my little at-home tote bag, and, again, it's the same color, same font. So little details matter most. Uh, another quick thing, how do you let people know about your brand? 
that's always the hardest part, right? Um, and it, it is a challenge because it's a little different depending on your industry. Is it an, are you trying to promote an event? Are you trying to promote you as a woman, a power of one, a business owner of one? Are you trying, are you a small person in a big company like Booz Allen or something like that? And you only have so much latitude, they're not going to let you rebrand Booz Allen Hamilton. Um, so, you know, what are you going to do? How do you let people know about it now you've created it? And I've done a couple of talks, especially in the military world, um, to real estate professionals, and their question is, okay, where do, I, where do I pay for advertising? Where do I buy ads? Do I buy these zip codes? Like, what do I do? And my answer is, that's always people's go-to, because you get hit with a million, probably, emails in your spam box on a daily, on a daily basis for your specific business or industry that's, oh, get leads here, buy this, buy this new software. Um, we call it shiny object syndrome, because we're all like, ooh, I got another one. I must be important. It's new. Um, but the biggest thing I tell them is, no, 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 no. Like, the reason and the power behind your brand and the beauty of it at the same time, you go out and walk the walk, talk the talk, do things to show who you are. And I don't mean just the two-minute talking sound bites. It's, you know, for me, big in the military, okay, well, I'm actually going to be involved with an organization like Homes for Our Troops or something. I'm going to go volunteer my time. I'm going to go help raise money for them. And then I'm going to let people know that I did that, not because I'm amazing, look at me, but it's more, look, this is genuinely an important cause to me. If it wasn't, and it's not who I'm about, then I wouldn't be out doing it. Um, so you don't take out paid advertisements and things like that. Go out and be your brand. Let people know who you are, and then it, it's not a shameful thing to then get press releases or photographs or promote it on social media and things like that. You're just reinforcing to people that, I mean it, this is who I am, this is how I carry myself, and this is what my brand is about. Social media is one to do. Um, we actually have, so we have At Home Real Estate's Facebook page. That has a certain flavor and tone and voice that I'll write posts. We have a certain kind of consistency to what information we provide. We kind of do it. Virgin Airlines is one of my favorite companies. Um, I love that Virgin has airlines. They have Virgin Wines. They have Virgin Radio. They have all these, and each one has its own brand, essentially, within Virgin. So our conversation, we're kind of a little more conversational, quirky, a little more modern in some of the things that we'll post on the um, at-home page. We have a new uh, program called the Renovated Home. It's more on the tapping into the aspect of HGTV kind of things. So we can kind of provide like a Property Brothers kind of thing for buyers. Um, sellers, it's more of um, it evolved because people say, I have to sell my house. How much is it worth like it is? I don't know. Um, how much, I don't want to deal with this whole renovation thing. And then how much would my house be worth on the back end? So we try to create an entire program, and it's essentially its own company that provides that to people and kind of mushes them together. Um, it has its own Facebook page. It has a completely tone and voice to it, a different tone and voice. So with those, the posts are a little bit more formal. They're a little more about hows and HGTV and tips and things like that. They're not the random like Funny Friday and Motivational Monday that I may put on that homepage. Um, so social media is a, a good way to convey. You can even boost posts if you want to. If you post something really good, you can pay to boost posts on Facebook. Um, I heard a bunch of them this morning that were, I've got to tweet out the picture. You know, let me get you a picture. Everything this morning that everybody was talking about was branding. From the name badges and the fact the little details matter most. You know, if you showed up today, they didn't have a name badge for you. They didn't just give you a white sticky with a Sharpie, which I hate. Um, they instead took the time because Maria's like, that's a pet peeve. They printed it out. They wanted it to have the logo. I'm listening to them even saying, wait, this doesn't have the Women's no Network logo. This has the Chamber logo. And you don't realize how many things that you're trying to keep consistent. That's all branding. Is it the right color? Is it the right name tag? And you get that it's the little details that matter most. Something as small as that makes somebody feel important because they're not wearing a Sharpie that says, I didn't get my registration registered, you know? Um, so that's a big thing. Video is another huge thing. That's why I was impressed with them especially. Their facility, again, you should tour their, it's like a whole green room. It's not even just a green screen. Very high tech. I think they're trying to delve a little bit into offering some of these services to the chamber. But they, it's, it's easy. It's a plug and play because if you have messaging, maybe, again, you're talking about, you don't have to make a commercial about yourself. You could. Um, but maybe instead it's, hey, I have this event coming up. Or I just want to talk to you about, this is what I just did. Or maybe you record a video series on tips of something to do with your industry. Or you're talking about an event coming up. Or Sand and Steel is doing, you know, hey, here's a nutritional tip of this week. 
a lot of people are trying to do this on their own in their own company, and we're guilty as well. Um, but I will be honest at one point, because we do all the marketing for all of our properties, for all of our agents. Every one of those is its own little marketing thing. We do videos. So I kind of fall by the wayside in priority when I just want to record a video, and the video team is like, sorry, agents can come first. So I would literally prop up my iPhone on the table and be like, okay, okay, ready? I'm going to talk about marketing or talk about branding. Um, that is not cohesive with the brand I'm trying to convey. Um, and when I came in here, I mean, again, they can make it look like a studio. If you want to look like you're talking in Old Town Alexandria or San Francisco or whatever is about you, they had an individual that was local, but he was very passionate about a certain sports team. Again, a sports team is a brand as well. Um, we have a Taekwondo team my kids are training with. They're actually on a big campaign about branding and marketing the team as well as individual athletes. Um, and they could have that as a background. That instantaneously tells people a little bit about you just because it's a background. But if you have that same image, you make an appointment with them, come in and be like, hey, yeah, I'm doing my weekly coffee talk with Karen or whatever. You just come in, have a seat, boom, the background's there. It's the same every single time. They record it. They do all the post-production. So that's a huge um, resource that we have that I didn't even know existed until I came for the tour. Um, so again, I'm going to wrap up because it's 2 to till 9. And I apologize because I'm talking fast. I'm trying to get it in. But just look at you know, some brands. Like I said, pay attention to brands in the news that are doing things. Pay attention to brands if you're on Facebook. Pay attention to some other companies that you just think they're amazing. A couple, I mean, my dog training company, I don't know how he does it. He's up to 80,000 likes now. And he has huge interactions. And he's based in Woodbridge, Virginia. So I pay attention to some of the tips they do or how they brand. And it's been such an exercise watching them because they have multiple locations. And they've actually had to tailor you know, the Woodbridge location gets completely different messaging, different images and things like that than maybe a different one in a different city. Um, Zappos is a good brand we like to watch. Starbucks, Virgin Airlines, like I said, hotel industries. Um, Sugar Shack is a local business uh, that you've all heard of. I think they are absolute marketing geniuses with the way, I mean, instantaneously, poof, they've exploded all over the town. And it's not just because I like their donuts. Um, but I had a heads up they were coming from Richmond. I'd never even heard of them. I'm like, yay, what is that? And instantaneously around town, everybody knows who they are. You have Kevin Bacon there singing Footloose in line. They've gone viral. They give out free donuts every single day, and yet I guarantee you they're making money. Um, but instantaneously, it's Sugar Shack. If I talk to somebody that doesn't, they're like, what is that? I don't know. But they have taken this town by storm, and you know who they are through social media around town or wherever. So they're one of my favorites to watch. But just pay attention to brands in the news on Facebook what they're doing, again, outside your industry. And that's it. <laughs> so again, I, I just wanted you guys to have some high level tips. Hopefully you get some tricks, kind of what we've done, lessons learned. Um, but I think it's such an important topic. And I know that each and every one of you has your own specialized, individualized, but, but mine doesn't work that way, but I have this problem. I'm always happy for questions. Again, feel free to email me, call me, I have my cards on me. But you're welcome to stop by the lounge. We have a lounge and design center. And there are indeed comfy couches and occasional cocktail parties that are private parties and things like that. We've had them chili cook off, things like that. That was good. We may bring you over for barbecue testing today. <laughs> but, um, but again, feel free to reach out to me if you guys have any questions. I know I'm just throwing a lot at you in 20 minutes. Um, but I wish you all the best of luck, and thank you. Thank you.